getting into DMB, I always sort of heard it on the radio. When I got to 18, I used to go to, you know, those bait clubs like Revolutions and stuff like that, which was, it was all chart music. You know, at the end, they'd play one or two drum and bass tunes, which was usually either Chopper Tune, Original Nutter, or Tarantula slam or something like that. So that was my sort of gateway into, into drum and bass. So my main influences growing up were probably Motown and reggae. Um, in my house, we listened to everything. My mum would always have music on. It was definitely a big thing growing up. I think it's really important to listen to other types of music to help put that into your music and your creativity. We want drum and bass to evolve as a genre. You have to take bits from elsewhere to put it into your music so it doesn't stay stagnant. We are here in sunny Tottenham Hale, just heading to the cause for the drum and bass barbecue brunch loveliness. It's actually 20 years this, this year. Um, I started DJing when I was 12. Used to mix garage and hip hop. Started off with a Newmark Dex in a box belt drive, only cost like 189 quid I think at the time and then yeah when I got to 18 obviously realized that I love drum and bass and sort of wanted to get back into it. Production did come a bit later I spent a lot of years you know trying to make a specific type of music and just finding that I'd come out with something the complete opposite. I just like to open up my laptop open Logic and then just see what happens. Easy Crew, it's your girl Sweet Pea and you are locked in to the DMP show here on Bass Drive Radio for the next two hours with myself Sweet Pea. Welcome to the Sweet Pea room. This is obviously quite small but this is my garden. Yeah, this plant right at the back is called Soul and I got this from Mantra for my birthday. Um, this one is from Sophie Mari, she sent it to me, bless her. These are my beautiful crystals. Yeah, I've been collecting crystals ever since I was a teenager, really. These are my lodgers. Um, this is Darth and this is Storm. Storm is a big fan of Sofa Sound. He just loves everything to do with Bristol. And little plug, me and Iris have a forthcoming collab coming on there. Darth, prefer, he's from the dark side, so he prefers stuff like rupture. They live in the corner and also shit the life out of me if I wake up in the night. My little peas cushion fits here. Anything remotely to do with peas, I pretty much have it. Slowly worked my way up. I'm hoping to get one that's sort of the length of a person eventually. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, anything pea related, I will probably, probably buy. When we first met Rude FM days. Yeah, Rude like FM when days. when you had long, gorgeous Yeah, when hair, I had long hair, like <laughs> curly like yours. You were up there with her at Imra Hell, mm -hmm. getting mashed, yep. having it. <laughs> it's fair. Yeah, and I remember rocking up with loads of records and Rahel being like, what are those 10 inch? And you were like, they're double eight. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, definitely Rude FM days Rude FM. were, yeah, the Rude FM rush hours will go down in history. Naughty. The first track we wrote was Saxon, wasn't it, for Saxon Addictive. for Addictive, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think we just caught some vibes and then we was like, so we'll get on the tune. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we'd, we'd been going out to raves and stuff and then, yeah, I think, yeah, we kind of just both were like, yeah, let's get on some tunes. And it was really nice as well because it was like the first track we wrote got signed. Signed well. straight away, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, boom. So, so yeah, nice. and then it was kind of, yeah. kind of spiralled from there, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, got mad props for Sick Note, like it's probably taught me shit loads in the in the in the studio, like yeah, oh, him man. and Reckless yeah. and you know, just good. them little, you know, little got a shout out protocol for teaching me the basics, you know what I mean? But just them little things to think about and yeah, just, uh, effects and stuff like yeah, that. And yeah, yeah. You're the master at chopping breaks, mate. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no mate, you know, it's got to share share the knowledge in it and I don't know, it just it's a nice vibe in the studio yeah, as well. Yeah. I remember one like session like we're at mine mm. pretty much when it's a tune and it's like yeah let's go to the pub went yeah. to the pub <laughs> got a bit a bit pissed at the pub and then went back to mine done Made another, another one yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that was wicked yeah good vibe <laughs> favorite thing about working with p I, she's my mate in it like it's just i think it's more like, i know if p's gonna come around and be in, and we're gonna be in the studio it's gonna be fun and we're gonna have a laugh and like it's <clears throat> like I've worked with people before and it can be a bit too serious and tonight it just doesn't click. Yeah. Whereas with you it's just like 
instant vibes. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's the most fun about it, I think, for me. So yeah, very proud of this. This is my first ever vinyl release. Um, it came out on Skeleton Recordings. Um, myself, Sick Note and Dissect, we made a sort of jungly track called Jalokia, which was named after a hot sauce. Uh, me and Dissect were gonna have hot wings chicken challenge and that's where the inspiration come from. So this is eventually gonna be my vinyl wall and maybe, maybe, maybe I might have another vinyl release this year. To an extent, I feel like as an artist and a DJ and what I'm playing is a little bit selfish because it's it's all the tunes that I would want to hear. Um, but I'm hopeful that, you know, the crowd that I'm playing at is feeling the same way I am. I like to think about who I'm playing for and who's on the lineup. Um, I really enjoy getting sets together for, you know, night specific things, like especially when I have the opportunity to play at nights like AKO Beats and like Rupture, for example. I really, it's not stuff that I usually play for the rest of the stuff that I do, but I really enjoy crafting sets for those. It's a reason why I love playing to the spearhead crowds because they like a bit of everything, like not too much of one thing, but you know, you can sort of play the lighter stuff, drop, drop a darker tune in there, sort of bring it back, play a bit of jungle for them, and then, you know, roll it out. I've got so many career highlights. I think one of them, one of my top ones has to be getting booked abroad. I think for any artist, um, knowing that another country wants to bring you over to their party is such a amazing feeling. Being featured in DJ Mag and things like that, like my face is in a physical magazine product. Getting played on Radio One as well, that was that was a huge, that was a huge one. Like having a drum and bass arena upload and getting played on Radio One was, yeah, definitely my sort of newest, biggest career highlights. Cause they're, they're both something that I've wanted to do for, wanted to happen for years. And yeah, it finally did. So that was nice. Yes, Bold, Vision Obi presents, we're back in business. We first met at Fire Club at an Inner Soul night. We actually yeah. conferred about this before we went on camera. <laughs> but um, yeah, Inner, shout out to the Inner Soul boys actually because they've been repping hard from day. And I went to a few of their nights and sort of knew a little bit about you before. And then, yeah, I think you said it earlier, ended up on a random little mic cameo because yeah. you know what MCs are like. You can't, <laughs> can't keep us away, can you? Hainsey was like, here you go. And yeah. that, that was it really, wasn't it? Yeah, JS, RMS were there. Because I know we had sort of crossed paths before, but I think, yeah, that was the... That was the first proper time that, yeah, we sort of like did, you know, did something in close proximity, I guess. I think I just remember walking into room two, not really knowing what, what, like much about what was going on yeah. and being like, it's popping <laughs> off in here. And it was like Hainsey doing his usual like madness on the mic. I was like, okay, I'm going to skulk up, see what's going on. Because it's quite concealed in the corner, isn't mm, it? It's like yeah. quite like a dark little corner. So I had to make my way forward to see what was going down. It was just yeah, you smashing it out with <laughs> Hainsey on mic. That was wicked, man just always been around each other, really. Vish is one of them lovely ones. He's just always about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. He's that, yeah, that Mike Cat guy that you just can't get rid of. But yeah, that is, is, about, is about right, to be honest. You're quite similar though, isn't it? Yeah. In it for the vibes, like more of a community family thing than actually sort of, exactly. I'm here to make it as an artist. Obviously that does play its part to a certain extent, but it's just been the community in it. Yeah. And I'm just happy to be involved. I, I like a lot of things about Sweet Pea. Aside from the artist side of things, I just like her bubbly character and energy. I think you're wicked. But um, from an artist perspective, I just seen you, like I said, like smash it up so many times, man. And like you roll with the best of them. And I think it's the high energy, the vibe, and obviously it's important to have you know as much female representation on your night as as possible. I think so anyway. Yeah, so working with Spearhead has been absolutely amazing. Like the whole family is so supportive and just really down to earth and chilled. When the um, the female empowerment movement started bubbling, um, Steve actually did an interview and he said he made a pledge basically, open pledge and just said, I wanted to do better by my label. He said in a couple of years, I want to have a few female producers and just, you know, do better as a label. And for me, like I've got the utmost respect for anybody that says, you know what, I'm lacking a little bit here, but this is what I'm going to do to make it better. 
So EQ50 was started in November 2018. Um, we're basically an equality network that is working towards fairer representation in drum and bass. Um, you know, that's not just women. Obviously, we push for women and non-binary people a lot, but that's also looking at, um, you know, race within our music, drum and bass, the colour of lineups and also accessibility. A lot of people are talking about the changes that need to happen. Um, and, you know, with initiatives like EQ50, we're here to help. You know, I I get all the let's raise awareness and all the rest of it. But how how much awareness do we have to raise? We were talking about this all of last year and still nothing has changed with certain lineups. Um, you know, if you don't know where to start, just visibility. Start with your events. You're really talented and skilled. The first time I saw you mixing at Life FM, I was, I remember saying to Flight, like, who's that? You know, while you were like juggling tunes in the mix and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, the bravery of how you put your mixes together is really impressive. And if I can help you succeed and do better in any way at all, that's why I'm here, you know? And I believe that that's after 30 years of doing my job, my, goal now is to encourage and help as many women come through. I don't see anybody else doing exactly what we're doing with such a big effect where it's actually yeah. happening with labels and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I left drum and bass in jungle for about 10 years and I was in a soul band, <laughs> which was really interesting and great. But when I came back via EQ50 and yourself, I noticed and saw that there were a lot more women DJs, MCs. The producers were always there but not really acknowledged. Um, but yeah, a lot more female DJs are, are out there now, which is great. At the same time, it really hurts when there's not one on any lineups, knowing Still. that there's so <laughs> many more to choose from. Yeah. I would like to see DJs, agencies, promoters, put clauses into their booking contracts that they won't play at an event unless there's at least 30% women artists booked to play. Festivals are a bit better with it, aren't they? But clubs and stuff are way behind, I think, with that. And so, yes, if they just added just a bar, <laughs> just a sentence, a paragraph of words, you know, stipulating all they need is to have more women playing that would make such a difference i think and the men would show their support to us the sort of newer labels are you know they're pushing and they're moving and they're starting with this in place at the moment it's starting at the bottom trickling up but it needs to go the other way it'll take one person it'll take one agency to be like right this is how we're rolling you know just go look at the main drum and bass agencies and look at what big superstar djs they have they get booked week in week out like if they just said you know yeah. give their paragraph it would change overnight like that favorite subgenre of drum and bass is minimal tech vinyl or digital digital <laughs> One more for the back. <laughs> I was going to give a little. <laughs> D bridge or Randall? It's got to be the bridge, definitely. Oh, if I could be reincarnated, who would I be? Do I have to be a person? I wouldn't mind being a blade of grass. <laughs> you know, just like, you just. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say a bird. <laughs> we don't need any more on that question. Yeah. <laughs>